so the agenda for today is that we're going to go over we'll go over what is Service Desk um, again, and then just do an overview of the different enhanced new features and demonstrate these features inside of Service Desk 7.5. So, what is Service Desk 7.5? As I kind of said, it's um, it's the next evolution in first semantic service desk. Um, we have four different ITIL processes built in and come all part of the product. I have incident management, problem management, change management, and knowledge management. The focus in Service Desk 7.5 was a major revision in incident management, um, adding a process automation section, an email templates, and some other major changes, including service queues. <clears throat> There's some minor changes in the change management that also allows some of the email templates. Um, Service Desk is still built on the semantic workflow framework for um, all of its back end everything. So let's talk about what are some of the new features in Service Desk 7.5 um, and what are those advantages. So the advantage of the new features is it removes some of the configuration from occurring in the workflow process. This is what's considered the process automation se section and what this is going to allow us to do is be protected when it comes to upgrading the major back-end workflows, the major back-end pieces of the product. Um, so we're not requiring changes in the back-end product to do workflows, changes like routing rules and email changes and other pieces like that. That all can be done inside the process automation. And then the overall sort of incident management workflow has been simplified um, in the sort of back-end process of what the incident management workflow looks like. So what is some of the new features in Service Desk 7.5? Um, business hour configuration is in the process management manager. Um, in past versions, this sat inside of the credentials manager, the workflow explorer section um, executable, and you could configure the defaults and global business hours. This um, bringing this into the process manager allows us to add multiple business hours. It was a little bit cumbersome in the past to change SLAs and push SLAs to different business hours. With this configuration and this change we now have the ability to within the process automation ability a section we can add in different business hours and have different sets of business hours. Um, as many business hour sections as we want and each SLA can notify and sort of scale on those different business hours. Service queues is a new feature within Service Test 7.5. Service queues are where all the assignments are going to happen now inside of incident management. Um, on, side, on top of the incident technician form all of the assignments happen directly to service queues. As we can see here, we can have um, a lot of different service queues, and those then get connected to groups. So within the security groups of Process Manager, those are connected and added to each group. A service queue can have multiple groups assigned to it, so when it gets assigned, it then goes and directs to those groups. It also can have a group assigned to multiple queues. So as I kind of alluded to a little bit earlier, there's some added rules, and that's considered part of the process automation. There's 13 different rule sets. Um, you can group conditions with operators, so we can have multiple conditions to fire to determine if it's going to perform the action. SLA rules can also be configured within the sets and within any type, any of the different rules and pieces and parts. Um, every ticket comes in with the default SLAs, those can be removed or kind of set not to run on every ticket and not every ticket must have an SLA. So there are certain tickets where people don't want necessarily have an SLA fired on them or you can have the SLA extended based on information within the ticket like classification, location, business services, other pieces and parts all within the rules of, this, of incident management. So here's an example of some of the rules and pieces and parts and where the rules are kind of put together. We have some like SLA complete and late missed rules that will run when those fire, um, when those are hit, and then on the incident received and changed. Um, out of the box, there only really comes with two built-in rules, the first being the default SLAs that are set on the tickets, which can be changed or can be modified to not always run on all tickets. Um, the next is uh, on resolution verified. We'll take a look at what the real on resolution verified one does but that is another built-in feature that it's using. The next big feature in Service Desk 7.5 is the email templates. 
Email templates allow us to use process and incident information to populate an email template. These email templates then can be used back in the rules, back in process automation to fire off at particular points. So the information is then added as a variableized information into different sections um, from the from to subject or the body. In each of these, we kind of push in an information, kind of click it, and it'll add to that section, and we can bring it in directly to each one of the sections, and that becomes the actual part of the email template and the actual email body information. A large feature and a really big feature that's been added to 7.5, and this becomes part of the process automation rules, is the ability to evoke a workflow from process automation rules. The one place we can see this already happening out of the box in Service Test 7.5 is to evoke the customer service survey. So based on the percentage that's set within the information, it's then going to determine whether or not to evoke that and send out the survey. So that is what's kicking off the survey now is that actual process automation rule. We're seeing a lot of ideas come about on how we can use this and how this can be used and a lot of ideas are coming from Semantic and how this could be used and where we would use this in various areas. Um, a lot of people in a lot of places want to have a new hire different tickets for new hire and different tickets for different pieces of a new hire process and this is one area where we're seeing a large benefit from other versions where we could kick off different new hire pieces and then parts and all the tickets that maybe kind of reference together with that and group together with that within there so we could be able to kick those off one after another kind of in the piece and part to make those connect to the original incident and that's all going to be based on a rule and then a workflow um, being kicked off and there is a template for what this workflow might look like available from Symantec. One big thing also when we start to talk about process automation and the process automation rules is a question of, well, I've got you know 50 different classifications that go to 50 different groups or maybe 10 of those groups are the same or so or different groups and everything. Well, one of the things that was added to the process automation section is what's called data mapping. So within the data mapping, both incident location and incident category can be used to connect and determine who they're going to go to based upon, based upon how they're put inside this data mapping field. So as you see here in this location example, we have locations put in and then we put in a queue in which we want it to send to. And then a rule is created that allows us to point that rule directly to this queue and say when it comes in with this location, location is set, it's going to go to one of these. This is available for both incident location and category. Um, there's also a data mapping that's going to show emergence, um, urgency, urgency and impact and impact and urgency um, in that matrix connected to what the priority will be. In the, in the past, that was always buried within, deep within the workflow. It was happening in a matrix, but it wasn't necessarily something that we could go in and get connected to and everything. But this is now putting it in a matrix where we can go and look at it and change it if necessary to meet the needs of, of your organization. So the next big thing is um, the changes within the process view page. Now this particular item, we're kind of pointing out that the comma is separated. This seems to have me a major change kind of separating process history, check, separating the comments from process history. Um, we and Semantic heard a lot of comments or com ideas from people about how it's hard to go through the history when all those things are firing off anywhere from how many times you visit the process view page to historical tasks if you have that turned on or other process message or other information being kind of pulled into there and such. So this is one example of stuff that's changed on the process view page. Um, other stuff is that in the ticket overview section, we now have classification up there out of one of its own boxes down the bottom. Um, other information about the ticket is also in the process status section. The assigned queue is also showing up there, so whoever the assigned queue is, and we can see that relates down here to the actual assign the group that correlates to that assigned queue. And then we also have SLA status. So SLA status comes up and will show up in there, and that's a new web part that's part of that this process view page. Thanks again for joining this webinar. Um, if you have any questions or if you would like to see um, a one-on-one -on -one demo, just let us know. Thank you, and good day.